come back. Okay, so this is for our session. Oh, let me change the, the at the time here for our um, CI, PM UX, really CI team, a focus on UX topics. Um, I will, let me see. So first uh, item number one is yours, Dimitri. Do you want to take that one? Yeah, thanks. Um, I uh, want us to see if we can look at 13.3, see where we're aligned, see if it's clear what needs to be done, and potentially uh, see what we can do in order to um, progress that. I think now is the time to start uh, thinking about 13.3. I discussed this morning with Vitika that issues for this milestone ideally should be done uh, at the end of this week, kind of, as we discussed earlier, uh, that uh, design will take up a bit of the time of engineering this release. But with 13.3 in our doorstep, um, I really want to push that we make that um, known right now, ideally soon. So I wanted to give you the word, see how far we are in that sense and what your plans are. Um, this is going to be the first week that I have a chance to start looking at 13.3 and adding issues to um, that planning issue you linked to. Um, what I can do, uh, so if the goal is whatever UX work that Vitika is working on for the current milestone, 13.2, she's going to try to wrap up by the end of this week. I'll, um, I'll make it my... Uh, I'll ping this group or, or you can check back yourself too as I'm adding things to the 13.3 planning issue, but I'll make it a goal to have a draft by end of this week. Not so much focusing first on the things for sure to add that may need UX work in 13.2, right? For the implementation of whatever I'm adding for 13.3. Um, it won't be the my complete draft, but at least I'll try to focus on the things that, that, that I need to discuss with Vitika. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much my plan for, for 13.3 this week. Uh, so that's interesting. Oh, okay, so it's item number two. I thought, I thought item two was one earlier, so. Um, yeah, uh, one. Uh... <laughs> Wait, wait one second. I have one uh, recommendation mm -hmm. uh, from Vitika. If you can, and see if you can prioritize the task for yourself. I just did myself for progressive delivery. See if you can push forward a UX depth and or um, UI polish issue for the 13.3 release. So Tao can bring that along in, inside this release. Um, it's, I've been trying to make that a standard practice Cross CI and PD. Now CI is yours, so it's it's up to you. <laughs> really got to help that. There was a couple of um, I tagged you on a couple of issues. Uh, not saying that those particular have to go in, but those are probably good for um, uh, how to say for um, in, not investigation, but for possible possibility to be picked up. Just uh, check my uh, notifications on the issues. And also maybe my last item will be a good candidate for that as well. Okay, and um, I mean, just so that I have an idea, um, is there any recommendation on by when I should try to wrap those? I'm, I'm not sure I understand so, the question. UI, UX debt, uh, UI polish or UX debt that, that, that I take up. Um, should I also be wrapping them up pretty soon so that I can focus on the next milestone? Uh, no, I think the thought here, Vitika, is in that 13.3 planning issue that is linked um, um, uh, in agenda item one, what, we, what we're asking you to do is go make a, go make a comment on there um, to okay. me and tag me and, and give me a, what your recommendation from the list of existing UX debt and UX polish, um, go tell me what you propose we should work on. And then if, if I'm in agreement, I'll move it up to the description that that's the one, one of each that we'll focus on. But if I have a questions or a different suggestion, we'll have a dialogue through the comment thread. 
Got it. So this yeah. is similar to what we did, uh, the three of us, uh, you, me, and Dimitri, uh, in the first week when I joined in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, that. Uh, uh, was actually, that was different. Yeah. Go ahead, Dimitri. Um, I, I mean, like, it is, it is similar in a way, right? But it is a different scope. Yeah. So just to, to be uh, clear, um, Vitika, what we're asking you to do is in this issue, if you scroll to the, there's, there's a list of UX debt issue in the list of U, UI polish, look through each one of them and you'll see there's a checkbox of our goal is to have at least one listed per category of debt or polish. Um, and I, I rely on the uh, designer to let me know what they suggest we should work on next of what they think is the most valuable um, to, to deliver. And then just add a comment here. If I, if I agree with it, I'll just say that sounds good and, and I'll add it to the description. And if not, we'll have a discussion about it in the issue. Sure. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and you won't have to actually uh, do any of the design work right away for it. Let's just agree on what they should be. Yeah. All right. Yep. Um, I hope that was helpful. And um, so, great question that you asked a lot of us have been working through these and we have a, a process going that we forget that we need to stop and and, and make it um, clear since it's new to you 100 percent. yeah sorry for us talking like it was assumption yeah. that we know yeah. uh, that everyone thinks uh yes. not what we talk about so yeah good question for, for clarification and if there is any help needed feel free to reach out Vitika. um Okay, if we're done with um, item one, we can move on to two. Uh, let me go open that UX. Uh, so on this, the, the Epic there for UX review, Epic. Uh, if I scroll down to, and I think the question here, um, hmm, and you also have a, uh, an additional one. So um, let's make sure uh, in that CI needs UX Epic, I want to scroll down and make sure that what we have for uh, design work for 13.2 matches up with the actual implementation issues for 13.2. Um, CI linter, error message to do. Yeah, yeah, those, those are all correct. Hey, Dimitri, um, um, is it correct for me to think that designer will move remove things uh from this design work table as it completes or as the milestone is over and the work is done is that right yes okay all right so i won't worry about editing that um a few lesson manuals. help is always always appreciated though if you see okay. an issue that is closed or anything like just give a comment there the more discussion the better okay all right i didn't want to mess you up if i delete remove things from there but at least you do have the the history link to compare if something's missing you expect it there i might go back and clean that up but at the bottom it looks correct of what we're um the expectation of what we want vitika to work on um in the actual issue itself vitika the the engineer whichever engineer is working on the issue may reach out to you on there and you could either let them know you can then link them to what the information they need when you're done with your design work, or you can let them know that's in progress and it's, it's your, your priority at the beginning of this milestone to, to hand off to them when you're done. Okay. Um, for the UX research one, do you, we want to defer that until we have a, our UX research meeting tomorrow? Is that all right? Uh, we can discuss it there. Um, okay, that sounds good. That, I think that's that's a good idea. There is the question around DAG. I don't know who put yeah. that on. I put a question mark in there. Maybe it was me, but <laughs> I don't think so. I couldn't remember. Uh, um, it was not me. Maybe. Me. <laughs> who was it? It was not me. Okay. Um, oh, yeah. see, see where it links to uh, I looked through that Slack thread, and um, there are some questions about the UX. Uh, so it's probably relating to some questions within this thread by uh, Brandon Leon. 
okay, let me see where it takes me. Okay, actually, uh, I didn't put that in there, but, but let me make a comment on that. What we'll do is, um, Vitika and I are looking through that thread. Um, so, uh, uh, a couple thought, um, are uh, copying, copying comments from thread uh, so to the feedback. I have Here's the link yeah. to that section. I've copied the relevant uh, feedback that concerns UX, concerns research, and I've pasted them on the issue from this thread. Okay, thanks, thanks, Yitika, for doing that. Um, and we'll just keep monitoring it. I, I put that she and I the DRI for copying the comments from this thread to the feedback issue. Um, uh, unfortunately, there keeps being more comments added to that issue, and so we'll have to monitor it. Um, so we need to do that. I, I'll, uh, so just to back, um, backspace a little, give everyone a, an update. The, the DAG visualization went out in 13.1 as a beta. Um, so what that means is the feature flag for it is disabled by default. Um, so we did not include it in the 13.1 release post because self-manage would not be receiving it enabled in that version, in, that, in the 13.1 release. But engineering enabled it for gitlab.com for all projects. And it happened on Friday, actually, um, earlier than I expected and than Vitika expected. I was assuming it was going to happen on release day yesterday, but because it was out there in production um, and the back end, uh, the front engineer who worked on the issue um, made a comment in the um, the daily stand up update that it would be good to get the word out that it's out there to be proactive. Jason posted on our what's happening at GitLab channel to let folks know internally that the DAG visualization is live on gitlab.com. Um, and that announcement triggered a lot of comments um, and feedback because uh, he suggested he suggested to give feedback using the button that's there, but instead our team members gave feedback in the thread, um, which uh, it, created a little more work for, for Vitika and I to kind of keep up with that. Uh, and I, I suggest that if they have, you know, if they didn't want to use the feedback thread for whatever reason, they at least take the discussion to the channel for discussing the DAG uh, visualization. Um, but even as recent as this morning, I saw more comments on that thread. Um, I think just general comments of they liked it. So that's where we're at. I did add, just for your awareness, to our team's 13.1 uh, retrospective issue that we probably want to coordinate better in the future when we announce this, uh, whenever we have something new that is going out in beta that needs feedback. Um, coordinate so that everyone knows when it's actually turned on. Um, I just wasn't prepared for it. So that's where we're at. Now, that being said, Kudos to Vitika. Thank you so much for reacting quickly during your business hours while I was still asleep to update the feedback issue on the fly to add more details um, because Jason mentioned that feedback should be collected on that issue using the feedback button. Um, we hadn't updated it yet because you'll recall at our last meeting, the idea was Vitika would update the UX research issue for DAG uh, visualization or just DAG research and that work would drive what we put in the public feedback issue but she didn't get a chance to do it all in that order and so thank you for reacting so quickly Vitika on on Friday by the time I woke up and was online I saw that you had added some a lot of um, uh, instructions for how the user what feedback we were looking for and thank you so much Lori for helping us refine the questions so that they weren't simply just a yes, no uh, answer type questions. It actually invited the user to give us more, more feedback. 
Does that help everyone get on the, um, have that context of what was going on with the DAG visualization? Yeah, yeah, I, 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 for me it does. Uh, I think it does kind of go into though that, you know, like the work that needs to be done on how to receive proper feedback is, is that much more important. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, the, only, the only thought I think with this is that it puts a little bit more pressure on like we should get this done so we can get the feedback we actually need because now it's like all over the place probably. I don't know, I haven't it seen the, the, the comments, but yeah. It is, it, I mean, the com there's, there's almost 40 replies on that thread of different comments and one reply could have like three actually uh, it, it, feedback that are completely different um, areas of feedback we're looking for. So, but it was a good lessons learned. Um, I don't think anything bad happened from it, but it did reveal to me that I probably need to do a better job of keeping the engineering team in the loop of what PM UX are wanting to do. Ideally, I wouldn't have necessarily turned on that flag until we were ready with how we wanted to collect feedback right? It's, it's one thing for it to be out there in production disabled, but we have the luxury of deciding when we turn the flag on. It doesn't have to be immediately on release day even. And certainly in this case, it was turned on the, uh, the business day even before release. So yeah. yeah um, I have a quick question about that. Uh, mm -hmm. Just was it uh, turned on for all projects or for just the GitLab project? Jason was saying in the thread, I haven't checked, but he said it looks like to him it was turned on for all projects. Because that might be a kind of a logical first step, especially yes. when you've got a feedback link that you could also test that feedback link internally if it's only on the GitLab project. Agreed. Agreed. When I, um, on my weekly meeting with, with um, the CI uh, leadership team, we talked about doing a slow rollout and and starting with something really small, which is the, the GitLab instance, rather than all projects, including customer um, projects. Um, but we didn't get to do it that way. So it was a good thing that um, I have a thread started to talk about how we can improve on that um, in the retrospective issue. Um, feel free to chime in if, if um, you wanna add your thoughts there. Um, now, luckily, you know, even though there was a little bit of a scramble on Friday, um, and, and probably a little more as we have to monitor this thread to, to copy the feedback into the issue. I don't think any permanent harm was done. It was just um, a little bit of chaos. We'll get better at it. I'm not too worried. It's good to iron out the wrinkles on the minor things rather than on the major ones. Yeah. Um, so the, and yes, agreed. And the good thing I think is it's out there and it has so much interest, all of the feedback. And so it's nice that we're delivering something um, that is of so much interest internally. And I think externally as well for our users. Um, I think this week there'll be a, a lot more uh, made about it in our, um, I think our, one of our developer evangelists has already posted on social uh, on Twitter. So, um, okay, so I think that was the thought of why that item was added to the agenda. Any other discussion on that or on the things that are in the UX review epic for work in 13.2? And then we'll circle back on you, UX research at tomorrow's meeting. Okay. Um, item three, Nadia. Yeah, I just wanted to bring this uh, item, this point up for everyone's attention. So uh, this is coming back to the merge requests widget OKR uh, that we have been already giving a lot of attention to, for which I'm uh, very thankful. Uh, James Ramsey, who is the, um, uh, uh, from the product department for the app. Let me see exactly the title. Just one moment. Yeah, so uh, product manager for Create. Um, he have um, 
I created an epic that I linked it below here uh, in order to attract some of our attention to oops, some of the improvements that uh, continuous integration can do for the um, improving MR experience. And he, to, up to his opinion, these this items that he's bringing up, one of which was already prioritized there. Um, so just uh, talking about the other two, uh, he believes that those two items are a bit more important uh, comparing to what we have already prioritized. And also, um, I was just talking today to Marcel, and he was uh, highlighting to me uh, this issue also in regards to the same te theme that is having an interest from Sid. But I've seen how you are on the second one. So just wanted to bring um, the items from James uh, Ramsey for attention. Uh, Tao, you probably have seen it, but just like making sure that we are aware about that and maybe we're doing the prioritization accordingly. I'm not sure uh, if there is anything, if, if we can like switch some items, if we agree with the um, priority, uh, well, uh, information coming from James, just wanted to bring those items up. Have you seen those, uh, Tao? Yeah, so if we, uh, on the misleading message displayed when MR is uh, first submitted, one. yeah, I, I actually asked engineering last week um, in our G underscore CI um, channel. I, I wanted an assessment of whether or not some of that we can achieve in, in the current milestone um, because Sarah, when she went to size this, actually said that, let's break this down into um, some smaller issues. And um, we didn't end up putting it into any milestone yet because on Friday I asked um, the, the engineers to take a look at it. Fred volunteered to take a look at it and he put his comments in there. I still don't understand from the team, the answer to my original question is which can we, do we want to pursue all of this in this issue or just one or two? I can create separate issues on. So I asked again this morning for the EMs to help me figure that out today. And so by end of today, we'll either decide to do a small part of this, you know, reduce the scope to a separate issue and I'll put the milestone on there, either current milestone or next milestone, or we decide to do this as a whole in the next milestone. So um that's great thank you yeah yep this and, is let me see and the, and the top one have you seen that one from uh james well you can check this comment he actually commented in our ux um issue that i created for uh to support the okr from the dev create yeah marcel reached out to me as well uh for these two issues see what is like are they prioritized are they scheduled uh, there seems to be quite a bit of pressure behind it. That's the, uh, the, the message he basically had. Oops. Uh-oh. I tried to add in. Okay. Uh, so maybe the question, um, um, Dimitri and uh, Tao, have we already prioritized any of those that we selected? I think there was like four, four CI selected from this issue as a priority. Um, have we like assigned any of those to the milestone? Is it still, uh, is, it, is it too late to switch them to the ones that Ramsey, uh, that uh, James, sorry, is asking? Or is it still possible to shift some of the priorities? Um, because I know we committed to do the four from the list according to the issue. We labeled them with the selected four priority from your, uh, from your workshop that you ran. Mm -hmm. I'm curious if we could replace a few of those with the ones that James is proposing. Um, okay, so, okay, so let me go to that epic. So the ones that James proposing, and we're talking about epics three, six, five, six. Yeah, I, I yeah. find it, I find this to be a little bit confusing or, oh, wait a sec, improved Merge Quest CI integration. So yeah, this right? is another Merge Quest created. Not another... You mean epic? Yeah, I don't know why he created a separate one because these are already well, okay. Well, he has three issues in there. The, the middle issue, uh, add, remove, to do tasks, that's already in 13.2. Yes. yes, exactly. Um, it looks like he, start, 
Just it looks like he started the epic before he found this one, and then he came and said, "Oh, okay, it's here." And so that's why. And so he's just pointing back to to the one he created before he found it. It might be better for him to close this one, so we don't have like a confusing duplicate one out there. So Does please, he... please, if you can leave a comment for him to close that, yeah. that would be perfect. Yeah, with a link maybe to the other one. Yeah. yeah. And the other two, do they make sense to you? So on the other two um, from his epic, um, the last one, misleading message display, engine, uh, the EMs will help me decide today how much of that scope we can deliver in 13.1. And if it's not all of it, I'll create a separate issue for the reduced scope. Um, so I'll, I, I in, in that one, I made a comment to James that, hey, I'll, I'll with the EM's help, because I, I need, it's going to involve front end and back end work. And we're adding this after the milestone starts. I need their approval as well. But I did tell James in there, we'll make a decision today what can be done in 13.1. As for oh, sorry, the, I did realize that we just discussed it, uh, the same one. Sorry, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, and then the first one in his list, merge change should um, retry failed message. Um, mm, Fail, wait, mm, yeah, so uh, there's, um, I thought this one had some other issues with it. I, th I think it makes sense if we post all these issues. So the issues that have been scheduled or intended to be scheduled for the merge quest uh, recommendations for verify and release, we post them to the planning issue for 13.3. And we include those new issues on the 13.3 planning issue as well. And then how you can figure out which ones can go where, uh, right? Because I yeah. feel we're a little bit of a confusing spot with issues floating around everywhere yeah. and anywhere. Yeah, I, I agree. And uh, at this point, the only thing I would consider from his list, I mean, number two in his list is already in 13.2. I'm only considering maybe adding that misleading message display because um, there's a CEO interest on what we're going to do with that. It currently doesn't have a milestone, but his first one in the list, it's going to have to go through our normal process of being weighted in a, in a needs weight issue and considered for a future milestone. Um, I'll respond on that issue. Uh, let me. Thank you, Tom. Yeah, if you yep. leave some comments there, that's perfect. Uh, at the end, it's uh, it's uh, up up to you to decide. Thanks a lot. I appreciate the attention. Yeah. Oops. Oh no. I just. What did I just do? Okay. Let me. So uh, on his epic, I just posted a comment. If he can close it, his duplicate. Okay. Um, are we sure that all of his issues are actually accounted for in our epic? Let me go look. Uh, I'll, con I'll confirm that afterwards. Yeah. I'll add it if needed. Thanks, Tom. And sorry, everyone, I have to drop to another session. Thanks a lot. Let yep. me know if Bye, Nadia. Um, All right, I think, I think the next X point is post to 13.3 planning issue. Uh, who wants to take that up? So the issues that Re uh, James Ramsey recommended and the issues that are recommended through the uh, Merch Quest recommendations issue. Under the bug, okay, make listed under the bug section. Uh, isn't it already under the bug section? Oh, it's gotcha. It's currently under the, um, it's, it's at the very bottom. I grouped them all together. Um, we, we only want to move. So right now there's three things grouped together. Um, the user experience in general work. I don't know what that is for. Let me share my screen so we're all thinking of the same thing. Um, 
So we're talking about moving these two sections, right? Up above under bug fixes, which I'm fine with, but I'm curious, do we want to leave this one where it is, which will now be at the very bottom once I move the UX step and um, UI polish? Do you recall, Dimitri? I think we ended up replacing what we normally would put here with this epic. Am I am I remembering correctly? I'm always muted. Uh -huh. oh, so it's so irritating when you're talking and then you notice that you're on mute the whole time. <laughs> Why? So oh my God. So I was saying in down in the agenda, I make the recommendation to uh, move the experience, use experience section up in, oh, okay. the, uh, in the planning issue and just refer to the needs UX epic for now. Okay. And also place the UX um, depth section and UI policy section directly under the bugs section in the planning issues because it's yeah. similar to the bug, right? Uh, but when you say up, how, uh, where, up to where specifically? So now the user experience section is in between technical depth, user experience depth, and user mm -hmm. base Yeah. User experience should, like, it is a special section on the planet. It is not similar to bugs. It's not similar to UX depth. It is specifically targeting what is UX working on. However, for now, let's, you know, let's make that section just refer to the PD need, uh, or the CI needs UX epic. So we don't have to duplicate content over two places because it's not working uh, as well as it should be because we're still on the curve and not less on the curve. So that might be an improvement for later. Um, okay. Well, I actually, this is, um, this is a preview of the change I just did. I actually would propose we put the UX debt and UX polish up near features because I, I don't want to put it under bugs because I want to keep bug fixes and security fixes close together. Right. And these two things are actually um, customer, uh, they're, hmm, they're, they're like bug fixes, but they're unique to UX that and UI polish. Uh, if we move it up under bugs, I don't want it to be between bug fixes and security fixes. So Dimitri, your choices are um, where yeah. I can mm -hmm. put them under technical depth. That is, that is perfectly fine. Like as long as they're in the same list of implementation issues, because these are issues that will be in going into this milestone, right? Yeah. Oh, you say move it down below technical debt? Mm. Yeah, that, that's perfect. And then use that, experience. That's, where, that, that's where it was before, though. It, the use experience section was in between. No, I'm sorry. If I move this, where, yeah, assuming I move out user experience, if, I, if earlier you had said move it under bugs, but then now you're saying leave it under tech debt, so really they don't get moved at all. So yeah, I misspoke. I misspoke yeah, on it. Gotcha. But like technical depth, technical depth, UX depth makes sense, right? Okay. Yeah. Um, all right. So on the UX one, I think I'll just put it above research. Let's see how it looks. And then I'll just link to um, this epic. Mm. I don't know if we need that total UX weight per milestone because that's that's already covered I think in your your issue for the the uh, I'll just leave it there let's see so now we have um, the, the features direction issues, and then we have a UX, which just goes to this, links to that um, epic. 
Um, there's research that links just to the needs weight issue. And then under tech debt is um, um, UX debt in, mm, is this a debt or is this, I'll just leave it there for now. Is this, um, is this what you were going for? If you, ha uh, if you have it yourself, you can also refresh and, and yeah, scroll to see. Perfect. This is perfect. Okay. Okay. Is that it for, for our agenda items? I think so. Yeah, I posted, oh. I posted the issues we talked about in the 13.3 planning issues so that we can see if we can get them scheduled. Because that is the ultimate goal, right, of all those yeah. issues. 13.3 and beyond, ideally some of them in 13.3, and then we should be set for success. Yeah, I'll look at those and I'll, I'll respond and I'll, I'll reply back on that, uh, that comment, Dimitri. Thanks for doing that. If, if you guys don't want to run away, I have a question that's kind of general, doesn't apply here, but it's, I don't often get to come to meetings and I haven't been able to ask in, in, in person. Mm -hmm. It's mainly just about, um, because we're adding warnings to the CI linting, and I'm just wondering if anyone has any experience or uh, just information they can share about how users interact with warnings versus error messages. So up until now, it's always been a big red error message. And there's going to be warnings now. And mm -hmm. we're, we're ta we've talked, uh, I've seen a lot in the issues discussing the, you know, we should put warnings and that's okay. But I, I just haven't seen any information about... Um, how users would interact with those warnings and just wondering if anyone can share anything about that. Cause I'm new to this. I don't, I think it's for informational purposes, Marcel. I'm not sure that there's anything else other than that for the user interaction. Can, can you give a little bit of context? I'm a little, um, so let, let's say you get a linting error and, and it says you can't do this with the pipeline. Uh, that's going to drive a user to go in and fix it. And I'm wondering if in the same situation, you flag a warning saying that you shouldn't be doing this. So we've got, you can't be doing this right now, but now we're going to start saying maybe you shouldn't be doing that. And I just have no information and no experience about, is that going to drive people to immediately fix it as if it's a warning are they going to take it as informational? Uh, and just, I don't have any, oh. any knowledge about that. Okay. Yeah. The idea is to, to have, to let them know so they can fix it um, um, themselves. Rather yeah. Than... So, so I'm not thinking about the reasons we're doing it. I'm just wondering if anyone has any experience about how a user feels when they see the warning. So, so it's not the reasons for it, but more the user side of things. How, how do people feel when they see a warning? Uh, it, might be, it might be a question for Lori, but she had to go. So I think Marcel, if you are providing a link or action or some suggestion on how they should be doing it, rather than just telling them that why they should not be doing this, that would definitely uh, incite a better response than if you just flash an error message after they have performed the action, because that's kind of frustrating for the users. I don't know if this would help you. I, I think it's going to be in the same place. So it's going to be after they've saved, for example, they've saved a CI file. They could get an error that says you can't save, or they could get a warning where, which says they did, it did save, but you probably didn't want to do that. So it, it feels a bit like uh, just unclear how people would, would react to the warning, but so it's if, not, yeah. Yeah, if it's incomplete, if you're just telling them that they shouldn't be doing this without uh, making them aware of the reason and the right practice, it could be a little annoying for the users. So, so one thing that Marcel, in, um, and I just linked in the agenda to the issue, this, this issue, by the way, is, is planned for UX work and, and, and implementation in the current milestone 13.2. Um, one thing that uh, Fabio has suggested in one of his MRs is he would like to, as a, one of the iterations on this, actually linking to 
instead of trying to give all the information to the user in the message that's returned on the CI lint tool or from the pipeline error, to link the user to a doc uh, somewhere in the documentation for them to get more information. And that, were you aware that that was what he was proposing? Or yeah, it, yeah. So, but it it was more say say we also did that for error messages. So if we also link to documentation for error messages and we link to documentation for warning messages, it, it was it was honestly a pure curiosity thing. Uh, if people had experience with some kind of differentiation between errors and warnings uh, from user focus or from the user's per perspective. And it is something we, we talked about recently within documentation linting because we, we've added three gradations of errors and warnings and suggestions. And we've been talking internally about how are people editing docs going mm -hmm. to be reacting to that. And some people are seeing a suggestion and saying, I must fix this. Like it's been flagged. Mm -hmm. That means I've done something wrong. And we're, we're talking about how, how do we make people know this is a suggestion versus a warning versus an error and not treating anything that pops up as an error. Uh, and, and it was just due to my inexperience that I was just wondering, yeah, it, it, if there was any research or any, if you've heard discussions about how no. people feel when they see warning messages versus yeah. how they feel when they see an error. No, but that is a good topic for, for a research project. Yeah. I'm, I'm not aware that we've collected that kind of feedback um, and, and um, develop any insight on how it would be interpreted. Yep. What, um, what we might end up doing is, is um, since this is already an implementation, Vitika, we might, um, this could be the topic for tomorrow's UX research meeting. I'll throw it on the agenda. We might circle back and do a research project and have the users, because the errors and warnings and suggestions will already have been implemented and just have them take a look at those and gather their feedback on what they think they, is the expected response, how they would respond to them basically. Um, and from that, Marcel, would probably drive what we do to make it clear to the user what the expectation is for them. Yeah, because some of the warnings, like if it saves, is clearly not a deadly mistake. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, then how do you react to that? So it, it was honestly a curiosity thing and not, not suggesting that, that mm -hmm. we should slow down implementation. But like you said, if we can watch how people interact with this first iteration, I, I think that would be a really great step to, to see, yeah, to see how they interact with the messages. Yeah, that's a really good idea. Um, I'll add that to t um, our discussion for UX research um, around this. And, the, and just so you know, Marcel, the reason we even had this story was that it was something that a community, a, a user from the wider community had created the original issue to talk about hey, as things get deprecated and, and new features come along that may be used incorrectly, it would be nice if this, the CI lint tool um, gave the user a heads up about that so that they can improve their pipeline knowing these things. Um, and from that, we kind of started with the, uh, the issues that last, the, really not the framework to include warnings and suggestions in the error message, and then this milestone actually putting in the warnings. Uh, Great, thanks. I'm gonna, yep, I'm gonna stop the recording.